So hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you guys my top 5 mods for the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus and Note 8. These customizations will give you the ability to make the device truly your own, be able to customize what you like and get rid of what you don't. This is TK, let's check it out. So today we're going to be looking at five different mods. Uh, I know you're going to notice there's six icons here. Two of them are very much similar, but I want to share with you guys my experience using both. Shush is also one of the other applications, System Tuner UI, as well as Substratum Theme Engine and BX Actions. The first one we're going to start with is the Substratum Theme Engine. This is using the Substratum themes on our Galaxy devices, and it does require you to buy an unlocking function, which is about, I think, a couple of dollars on, this, on the Play Store. The theme engine itself is free. The themes, uh, a good part of them are free. You can buy certain ones. The one I definitely like to use is Swift Black. Swift Black is one of the more popular ones and also the, the one with the most amount of compatibility. You'll notice it works with Android 7.0, even Android Oreo, uh, and as far as Nexus and Pixels, other experimental, of course, and when you go to Samsung Galaxy S8. Here, all you have to do is just select the application. You'll notice this says there's update, uh, all the different applications that are supported. There's a long, long, long list of applications that you can update, even supporting how this theming engine here is theming the Substratum app. Once you have this installed, you're going to get a much better UI experience. You'll notice the deep black here, as well as the customization at the home screen or even the setup screen, at the settings screen. And this is where you're going to say, well, TK, all of these things can be done with a standard theme from Samsung. But can a theme from Samsung do this for you? Theme your uh, you know, Instagram application. Uh, can it theme all the other applications that are on the market? An example. Now, when I, once I update everything, more, th more things will be customized. But let's say I want to go in here and I want to go into Twitter. Here's Twitter with a true black theme, not the, uh, not the dark theme that they provide us, which is slightly grayish. It truly just integrates all of the colors in here. And that's the power of Substratum. Substratum doesn't just give you app, uh, just configuration to the system level, but it also gives it to you to the app level. And as applications get updated, that theme gets updated and you can just reapply the layers. Um, configuring and using the layers in Substratum is pretty simple. If you install it and for some reason your app doesn't work anymore, go into the layers list, find the application that is not responding to you and just select it and then select the tab here that says uninstall selected. Once you do that, your device goes back to normal. Very simple, very easy. And again, even though it says S8, it works on the S8, S8 Plus and Note 8. The next application we're going to look at is the System UI Tuner. System UI Tuner gives us the ability to access those settings that are, have been disabled to us by default. Um, we're pretty much set with the welcome screen System Tuner, System UI Tuner. There is information here if you want to be able to go and check out more on the XDA thread, Google Plus, Telegram, GitHub and more. And then just say go to tweaks. You can customize the status bar. You can go in there, turn on the different toggles. So let's say you get these notifications at the top that you do not want to see and you don't want to see them anymore. Just disable the toggle and it will no longer show up whenever it comes up on the screen. Uh, the other thing here is auto, uh, auto detect just for different tabs, but the quick tabs here, you can do fancy animation and you can notice right here when I bring down my quick toggles, I have eight icons. By default, it doesn't default to that and you can change it to the level that you want. And you can even go in there and then go into uh, touch with settings, see some of the other options, you know, face icon, um, IMS voice, LATE, NOX icon, LBS icon. Under miscellaneous is where you'll find the battery percentage. By default, we have that on if you didn't know where it was. The headphone volume warning, you can disable that if you don't want to get that warning every time you cross that 60%, 60 to 70% threshold. And then uh, night display auto, night display uh, activated. Some of these things are things you already know how to do. Now, as far as the animation scale, if you know how to get into uh, developer options, this may not be a very functional thing for you, but if you don't, you know exactly where to go in there and change it. And this will speed up the process or at least the UI experience with your Samsung device. The next one we're going to be looking at is called Shush. Shush is an application that enables us to do two things. A, it enables us to actually time our um, do not disturb or time our uh, silence option on our device. By turning it on, you need to give, ac give it access to notification, give it color selection, which one you want, purple, blue, green, um, and I can go back to blue. And then of course you can share the application. Once you're done, it's pretty much the simple way to do it. So let's say I'm on and about to go into a meeting and I know it's going to be about an hour meeting. I'm going to shush my device and it's going to come up in front of the screen at the bottom and says, how long do you want to shush it? I want to shush it directly for specifically for about an hour. And when it's done, it's going to go in. I'm going to say shush. The timer starts on your screen and approximately an hour from this point until 7.33 a.m., my phone will not uh, play any sound. Once it's done, it'll come back up. Now, you can disable it and go back to normal mode. It goes back and it ignores it. But it's a powerful tool when you're trying to get into class and it just really works nicely the way you want to have it. Uh, you just trust the device whenever you want. And when you're done with it, just it'll come back by itself. 
The next application on the list is actually a pair of applications. If you already own Package Disabler Pro from previous versions of Android or Samsung devices, this is still going to work, but there needs to be a workaround done for you to make the application an owner app. Uh, it's essentially the PDP engine that comes behind uh, Package Disabler. BK Disabler doesn't seem to require that and it was able to work for me right away out of the box. So both really function the same way. They're package disabling applications which enable us to remove applications from the foreground or even from starting up. This is different than just using your device and saying, um, you know, disable an app. This is actually forcing any application, regardless if it's a system app, to be able to be disabled. I Meaning you can disable bloatware much stronger in this. Now, for me, the way I've been doing this is I usually like to go in and disable certain things, specifically on my device, uh, from, let's say, carrier applications that I don't want to see in my system. By default, I like to disable the name ID. These are applications that are in there. The T-Mobile app that comes with the, with the device uh, is by default an application you cannot uninstall, you cannot do anything to, you have to keep it in there. And once you disable that, you'll notice that also there's another package I've disabled at the top. It's that com.tmobile.pr.adapt. This is the data collection uh, mo uh, sorry, uh, application that they installed. Again, system application, cannot disable it, cannot remove it. The only way to do this is using package disabler. And if you disable these two applications without this, you'll notice that this runs in the background and starts eating up and draining your, bi your battery. Um, other than that, you can go in there and disable, let's say, Facebook, other applications. It's very simple. They do have the options here to go in there, importing XML files. If, let's say, you have a specific list of things you want to disable, uh, Bixby Remap, if you want to try to remap it here, uh, it does have that functionality built in. I haven't used this. I do have another application that does work with that. Um, and, of course, you can just uninstall this app or, you know, rate it in the Play Store. Very simple UI, very easy to use. You can go into favorites, uh, you can go to system-based application and what they consider to be bloatware, meaning third-party applications that you can just disable. Very powerful tool. The only thing I would say is research every package before you disable it. If you're gonna disable something, make sure that you are aware of what you're disabling. Meaning if you're disabling Facebook, don't disable everything that says Facebook on your device because believe it or not, the Gear VR ecosystem is actually reconfigured to be under Facebook packages. Since Facebook technically bought Oculus and Oculus is supporting the functionality here. So the packages have the word Facebook in them. So if you're going to disable Facebook, make sure you only disable Facebook. Last but not least, I do have a BX Actions Rewrapper because in case you necessarily that you don't want to download the, uh, BX, the BX Disabler or the Package Disabler, you can download the BX uh, Actions. And this is a remapping application, gives us the ability to remap the functionality of the Bixby button. Now, if, depending on when you see this video, yes, there's been an update from Samsung that enables us to disable the pushing of this button so that it initiates Bixby, but it doesn't really disable it. There's two, really two ways to get rid of Bixby or at least try to go around it. One, using a, a disabling application and finding out exactly all the Bixby packages and disabling them. That will remove Bixby from your, from your system and you will no longer get that functionality. If you push the button, it's not gonna come up for you. You notice it already initiated here. What's the weather like today? Very simple, very easy. Now, it doesn't take away from the uh, fact that you are probably going to be initiating this button more often than you think you're going to, but the fact of the matter is, at least now, you can remap it to whatever you'd like. At the end of the day, you want to be able to customize your device to the way you like it. Substratum and the System UI Tuner give you the ability of customizing it to the next level. If you want a dark theme, uh, as far as installation of a dark theme on your device, get it across all your application as well as your system. Get the ability to customize your UI using the System UI Tuner and getting those additional toggles and making it really more of a unique experience to you. Now, as far as using the additional application, BK Disabler is a really powerful application as well as Package Disabler. And these things really just give you the ability of getting rid of all of those bloatware applications from running in the background and eating up your memory and slowing down your system. If you're running on the S8 and the S8 Plus, you only have four gigs of RAM where the Note 8 has six. So it's not as much of a needed thing on the Note 8 as far as the application, unless you just want to get rid of them. They won't even show up in your app launcher. So that's really the benefit there. And again, none of this requires root. Now, some of these applications are paid, some of them are free, but you, depending what you want to do, you can use. Uh, the BX Remapper is definitely a free application you can install. Shush is also a free application. And I find that these two just kind of give me the ability of at least getting around this whole Bixby situation. If you like Bixby, by all means, don't worry, ignore this application, you'll be fine. Uh, and you'll be able to enjoy all the benefits out of this system. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if there's additional mods that you guys use. Now, I didn't cover Nova as far as a launcher because that's not really a mod, that's a launcher replacement. And launchers have been around for a long time. So changing your theme, your icons, and all of that stuff within Nova is not really part of what I was trying to share with you guys. These applications help you customize the UI, the system, the device to your liking. This is TK. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As usual, like and subscribe, share with your friends, support the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.